Lord of the Flies is a powerful, evocative, heartbreaking story of boys stranded on a desert island and what happens when they try to create a society from scratch. Lord of the Flies is written by William Golding, who was born in Cornwall, England on September 19th, 1911. An ambitious writer from the get-go, Golding began writing at age seven, attempted his first novel at age 12, and published his first book in college. As a child, he was somewhat of a bully, which is central to many of the characters' behaviors in Lord of the Flies. After college, Golding became a teacher and later a schoolmaster, once again informing some of the community behaviors in Lord of the Flies. He enlisted in the Royal Navy and fought in World War II, spending six years on a boat. William Golding wrote Lord of the Flies in 1953 while recovering from his experiences in World War II. And much of these experiences would inform his dark philosophies about the nature of mankind. Now, Lord of the Flies is also an allegory for the Cold War and the divisions and factions formed by people with centrally conflicting personal philosophies about how society needs to function. As Lord of the Flies begins, these English schoolboys have crash landed on an unknown island, and we meet two of the main characters, Ralph and Piggy, as they emerge from the lush jungle. Ralph blows a conch shell to summon the other surviving boys, and they gather on the beach, where we meet Jack and his hunters, the Little Ends, and some of the other key characters. Ralph is elected chief, rules are established. Jack becomes obsessed with hunting, and ignores other chores, while Ralph focuses on keeping a signal fire continuously lit so rescuers will be able to spot them. As Jack becomes increasingly bloodthirsty, constantly searching for pigs to kill, catastrophe strikes when a boat passes the island but doesn't stop because the signal fire was unlit, having been abandoned by the hunters. Twins Sam and Eric discover what they think is the phantom beast the Little Ends have begun to dread, that they believe wanders the island, but is in fact a parachutist's corpse that has landed after an air battle in the night. Jack runs away to form his own group, and they descend into savagery, painting their faces and losing sight of rescue at all. Simon, a shy and thoughtful boy, encounters a pig head on a stake Jack and his hunters have left behind and has a fever dream-like conversation with it. It calls itself the Lord of the Flies and threatens Simon, prophesizing his death. Simon is soon thereafter killed while trying to tell the others about the beast, which he has learned is the parachutist. In this way, we see that logic and knowledge have collapsed under the weight of fear and mob rule. Jack's tribe pillages Ralph's camp and steals Piggy's glasses in order to start fires. After trying to reason with Jack and his crew, Piggy is murdered and Sam and Eric are captured. Jack's tribe recklessly pursues their scapegoat, Ralph, burning the jungle to the ground in an attempt to smoke him out. While trying to escape Jack, Ralph runs into a naval officer on the beach. Lord of the Flies concludes with Ralph Jack and all the other boys crying on the beach for their loss of innocence as a rescue ship stands by. Now, Lord of the Flies is full of crucial symbols. Piggy's glasses represent not just civility, but about the limits of humanity in the face of nature. They serve a physical purpose of starting fires, but Piggy is also dependent upon them to see. They're a bastion of humanity that gets shattered early on and stolen as Lord of the Flies unfolds. Then there's the conch shell. This beautiful ornamental symbol is used to gather the boys and is a representation of order and logic and of structure and human collaboration with nature. Its destruction coincides with the death of Piggy, the most logical and thoughtful of all the boys. The pig's head, otherwise known as the Lord of the Flies, is the catalyst for an important scene with Simon. It's another name for Beelzebub, Satan, a figure that represents evil and the darkness inside all of us. War paint is another important symbol that speaks to the descent into savagery by Jack and his tribe, as well as the capacity for any person, no matter how innocent, in this case schoolboys are the example, to be ruled by fear and brutal violence. Finally, there's the symbol of the uncontrolled fire, which at first is used to show a lack of order and understanding. When one of the little ones goes missing, it shows that their signal fire, the first one they've lit, has raged out of control and segued into death. 
when we see it again, it's the fire being used to try to kill off Ralph. Ironically, it is the out of control fire that threatens the entire jungle that leads to the boy's rescue. There are a few central themes in Lord of the Flies we need to discuss. First, civilization versus savagery. We see that order, structure, and logic are chipped away at throughout Lord of the Flies by fear and paranoia, which leads to full-on brutality. The English schoolboys, so used to their own order and structure and rules, are suddenly left without grown-ups to reinforce them. What happens in Lord of the Flies is Golding's way of showing how imaginary terrors and undisciplined governance can collapse into the chaos of war. Then there's the theme of the loss of innocence. Through the trauma of the island, the boy's experience quickly becomes an allegory for a world engulfed with war that rages beyond the island. Finally, there's the nature of evil itself. It's not one monster, one enemy, but rather inside us all. We see it first in the hunters and then in all the boys who become parts of Jack's tribe. Evil lurks inside us all, and in the right circumstances, we are all capable of it. Lord of the Flies still resonates today as a disturbing, engaging microcosm of how society works, how innocence gets corrupted, and how people, even innocent schoolboys, capable of collapsing into unspeakable violence when civilization is stripped away.